Hey y'all, it's your realtor, Brooke. Can I fill you in on a secret? When a buyer is driving up to your house, they expect when they walk through that front door, it will look just like an HGTV makeover show turned over their keys. I know that's gonna be stressful for a lot of you, but I've uncovered a way to make that more of a reality for my sellers. So stay tuned while I cover my top 10 secrets that no one else will tell you about staging your home for sale. And as you saw earlier, keep an eye out for the cats in the background. Number 10 is your front door. You may go in and out of your garage every single day and may not even realize when Amazon has left a package at your front door. But the buyers will most likely come in and out of your very front door. And while the agent is at the front door, see the little doorknob area? That's where the lockbox will be. And as the agent is there opening the lockbox, the buyer is gonna be looking everywhere. And they're gonna notice everything about the outside of your home. So number 10, make sure the outside of your home is staged. Number nine, staged homes simply photograph better. And let's face it, in this digital age, a future buyer is looking at Zillow and Trulia and Realtor.com and my website and looking at the photos before making a decision to come to your home. Staged homes always photograph better and the photographs they see online is the first showing of your home buyer likes what they see online, then they'll schedule an appointment to come see your home in person. So making sure your home is staged for photos is extremely important. Number eight, get rid of your crap. And by crap, I mean clutter. And yes, I mean all of it. Clutter not only photographs horribly, but it makes a home show awfully. So when in doubt, put it in a box and save it for later. In addition to moving a lot of clutter, you're gonna need to remove a lot of furniture. In smaller rooms, make sure there's only three pieces of furniture in the room, no more. In larger rooms, you can handle five pieces of furniture. So pare it out on the furniture, put it in storage, put it in your basement, you're moving anyway, but rooms with less furniture show better than rooms with more furniture. Number six. Bare counters, yes. Bare walls, no. Anything on a kitchen countertop or a bathroom countertop has got to be removed, especially for photos. You can move your coffee maker back onto the kitchen counter and your clock back on your bathroom counter in time. But for the photos, it needs to be absolutely clear. And it is best for actual home showings that other than a small appliance like a coffee maker and a plant, you really should have nothing on your kitchen countertops at all, nothing on your bathroom countertops at all. So things that you use on a routine basis that you normally would keep out on your bathroom countertop, put it in a basket, keep it underneath, and when you need those tools, you take out the basket, you use your shampoos, you use your conditioners, you use all that stuff, and then once it's done, you put it back. Speaking of shampoos and conditioners, your shower and bathroom, bathtub, also need to be clear of everything. Do not leave out your razors, do not leave out your shaving cream, do not leave out the bacteria poofy hanging from the hook. All of that has got to be put away for photos and for showing. But the other part of this was, you do not have to have bare walls. Having pictures on walls actually helps show the house even better. It draws the eye up, gives the illusion of more space because the buyer is not walking through the home looking down at the floor and looking down at furniture. It also gives the illusion of higher ceilings. Now, anything you do have in the wall, make sure it's as depersonalized as possible. And speaking of depersonalization, number five is depersonalize your home as much as possible. So 
So people are gonna be going through your, through your home and they are gonna be making deductions about who you are as a seller. But what you want them to do is pay attention to your home. Now they're gonna see things like things that display your family status. They'll see things that display what your occupation is, where you went to college, where you went to high school, where you've lived before. And all of that stuff needs to be removed. That way, a potential buyer can come in and look at your home and see themselves in your home and look at your home and not just think about what your situation is. Also, from a safety perspective, if you have things in your home that have your children's names on them, or if your children's names are on a wall in their bedroom, it is extremely important for you to have those things removed, especially for photos, because those are gonna be on the internet and anyone can see those. So make sure you depersonalize, including having things displaying the names of your children in your home, and your home will look much better. Number four, make sure the space is clearly defined as far as what it was meant to do or what it could do. So sometimes we have a bedroom set up as an office. Well, if you have a four bedroom home and one of your bedrooms is set up as an office, it might confuse some buyers into thinking all you have is a three bedroom home. So making sure bedrooms are staged as bedrooms, dining rooms are staged as dining rooms, living rooms can be staged as living rooms or studies depending on what your agent recommends to you. I had a client who had a bedroom in the upper level of their home converted into a really awesome laundry room. But when it came time to put their home on the market, the house really was going to show like a three bedroom home. Even an appraiser would be confused as to whether or not that room was a true bedroom. So by removing the laundry area and the sewing area and staging that room with the bed, we were able to market the home as a four bedroom home, which it truly was, and net that seller at least $10,000 more in their proceeds. Number three, every space of your home is going to be viewed. And yes, that means inside your closet, inside your pantry, inside your linen closet, and inside that junk drawer. So please make sure you stage those areas as well junk drawers and pantries. You can remove a lot of the things you haven't used in a long time. Use really nice, pretty containers to display your things. You can face your cereal boxes, make it look nice and showy. Your linen closet, make sure all of your linens are folded. And I recommend only keeping the linens that you're going to be using in the next couple of months while your home is on the market. And then your closets, extremely important. Cramped closets, show people that you do not have enough storage in the house. And people these days absolutely need storage. So one of the best things to do in your closet is remove all of your out of season clothes and pack them away. You're gonna be moving into your new home before you're wearing those sweaters or before you're wearing those sandals again. And that gives your closet a more spacious look. If you look at closet advertisements on television or in magazines, you'll notice the closets look beautiful and one of the reasons why they do is because there's very few things in the closet itself. So make sure you're staging all of those areas. Now, if a person really likes your home, they absolutely are gonna be opening up your kitchen cabinets. They're not opening them up to see what kind of dishes you have or what kind of Tupperware you have. They are looking inside to make sure that they can store their things inside. If I open up a kitchen cabinet and everything is neat and orderly, I'm making the assumption that the house has been well taken care of and there's nothing I need to worry about. So make sure you also declutter behind closed doors. Ever wonder why some homes look really awesome on the internet and the price seems to be just fine, but they seem to sit there on the market for a long time? This brings us to our number two staging secret, and that is stinky homes do not sell. And we can all think of stinky homes when it comes to 
pet odor and mold and mildew and things like that. And there are remedies to take care of that. But stinkiness can also come from one of your favorite air fresheners. So if you're choosing to freshen your home, my suggestion is use fresh plants and flowers, not air fresheners. Also, if you have pet odor in your home, ensure that your carpets are all cleaned, ensure that your ductwork is all cleaned out, and take steps to make sure the pet odor is eliminated. Pet odor is one of the biggest reasons why houses don't sell, and pet odor can cost you tens of thousands of dollars in home value. Another thing to think about as well is if you exercise or you have a physical job and you come home and you have sweaty clothes, sweaty shoes, sweaty socks, that odor can stick around for a very long time as well. So my rule of thumb is do laundry every single day. Put your laundry away every single day. And if you have sweaty shoes or sweaty boots, keep them outside. Don't put them in the garage because somebody's gonna go in the garage and it's gonna stink up the garage. Don't set them on the front porch. That's the first place people are gonna walk into your home and the first thing they're gonna smell. Literally set them outside the basement door or the back door so they get some air. Stinky homes do not sell and a stinky home can cost you tens of thousands of dollars. So get rid of those odors. And finally, the number one thing that no one has told you about staging is yes. You are going to have to live this way. You're gonna to have to live this way until you at least have an offer ratified on your home. The reason why you need to live this way is because you need to have your home show ready at a moment's notice. And we all know when we're looking to buy things in the store, packaging of a product either draws us to the product or draws us to another product. Packaging of a product will also make us pay more money for something because we think it's worth more because of the packaging. So keeping your home beautifully staged is extremely important and yes, we're gonna have to live that way. So my free gift to you, linked below here today, is my get your house ready quick checklist plan. So after you have your home professionally staged, you have a quick just get the house ready to go, throw the stuff in the car, checklist, so you can get up and leave in 15 minutes and your show, your house is beautifully show ready. Hey you, don't forget to click the subscribe button right here to keep all this great information coming to you. And if you wanna know more about the services we provide here in the great Commonwealth of Virginia, click the link to our website, go fill out a seller or a buyer profile, and we will get in touch and help you out as soon as we can. Have a great time. Don't forget, subscribe.